We're very pleased to have Anant J. Talolikar, Chairman and Managing Director at Cummins India on NDTV Profit today. Mr. Talolikar, thank you very much for joining us on NDTV Profit. Great to have you here. You're welcome. So, I just wanted you very simply to define smart manufacturing in the Indian context. This is really quite simple. Uh, smart manufacturing is all about an integration of traditional manufacturing the way we understand it, along with electronics, with information technology, the internet, and wireless communications. So when these five areas come together, this is what creates smart manufacturing and therefore transforms something that is mostly brawn to a lot of brain. That's an easy to understand uh, definition. How much progress have Indian companies, India in general, made on the smart manufacturing front? And comment also on the enabling environment, the policy framework as well. Well, India uh, is still at a very, very nascent stage of embracing smart manufacturing uh, for obvious reasons. You know, I'll give you one. Um, you know, the digital infrastructure in India is at a nascent stage. It's still evolving. The ability to connect and communicate uh, over the internet at high rates, at fast speeds, uh, all the way across India is still growing. Uh, it's very much established maybe in certain urban centers, but you know, throughout the country, there's still a ways to go. Uh, so we have such uh, sort of barriers. So I would say, you know, we are uh, still, you know, pretty much uh, at the early stages of smart, uh, smart manufacturing. Uh, the Make in India campaign will clearly help uh, with accelerating the progress. Uh, so essentially, Make in India, you know, uh, creates an enabling environment uh, which allows more manufacturing investments and clears obstacles, uh, policy obstacles, ease of doing obstacles, uh, certain incentives or, you know, um, uh, dismantling disincentives. So, you know, this is really exciting. I think uh, it is very opportune uh, that the new government has taken this uh, stance uh, and uh, the CIA Manufacturing Council is working very, very closely uh, with the DIPP and other ministries uh, on making Make in India a reality. Fair enough, but I'm sure there are gaps that haven't been addressed and they'll come to your mind more uh, you know, sharply than mine. What to your mind are the gaps that really need to be addressed? Well, uh, you know, one example of a very important, uh, you know, policy that is yet to be addressed, but of course it's a hot topic, uh, is GST. Uh, now, GST, uh, you know, creates, uh, you know, a lot of simplicity uh, for manufacturers in India and, of course, for other industries. But certainly, uh, manufacturers in India today have to face a plethora of indirect taxes, uh, depending on which states they belong to. They have to face central taxes. Uh, so the GST's intent was to, you know, clear all of these complications, which are also rife, uh, you know, with corruption uh, potential, uh, and create a transparent and very, very simple uh, indirect tax process. Uh, but as you can see, uh, you know, it's still bogged down with, uh, you know, politics, uh, which is, of course, uh, a normal part of uh, any democracy. Uh, but, you know, this is, uh, this is one example of a policy, let's say, uh, that would be very helpful uh, once it gets through. Uh, of course. Uh, let's talk about Cummins India, if you will. How is the Indian arm position to capitalize on the manufacturing restructuring being undertaken, you know, by the parent Cummins? Um, my view is that uh, the Indian arm is very well positioned uh, to, um, you know, participate and help the global parent uh, become stronger uh, from a, you know, competitiveness perspective. Uh, the reason I say that is because, uh, you know, the Indian arm uh, has been an Indian citizen now uh, for the last 50, uh, almost 54 years, since 1962. So we are a very mature uh, business. We are not a new startup uh, without uh, experience. Uh, so over the last now five decades, uh, we have created uh, a very strong infrastructure of manufacturing competencies in India. Uh, we have 20 manufacturing plants. Uh, they are all connected well together uh, by, uh, you know, a whole move of uh, 
functional excellence. We drive Six Sigma uh, in a major way. The quality levels that we have achieved now uh, out of our manufacturing operations in India uh, is at world class levels, second to none uh, of uh, any in the Cummins uh, family uh, globally. Uh, we have an excellent set of uh, diverse uh, leaders, uh, both men and women and uh, people from all parts of India uh, that are very mature, they are very aligned uh, to Cummins' uh, you know, core values and vision of making people's lives better. Uh, and uh, we have you know, deep uh, functional expertise built in manufacturing, engineering, in purchasing, uh, in quality management, uh, in supply chain management. So I feel like we are well positioned to, to help uh, as Cummins looks to uh, further improve its uh, cost competitiveness. And since we don't get uh, the opportunity often, uh, you know, share with uh, our viewers the business outlook for Cummins India, both in the domestic market and uh, the export front. Sure. So I would summarize it as uh, our domestic, you know, Cummins in India participates in three large areas. One is the on-highway commercial vehicle engine market. Uh, the second is the power generation or the generator set market. Uh, and the third is the off-highway uh, equipment engine, engine market. Okay? And all three markets, I am happy to uh, state, uh, are, have improved. So they have improved as compared to a year ago, uh, when I would say you know, the, the sort of the slowing down of India's GDP had drastically impacted uh, these markets. Uh, but I'm very happy to uh, state that uh, based upon, uh, you know, the efforts of uh, the, new, uh, the new government uh, that is very uh, focused on uh, GDP growth uh, and unleashing uh, the local economy, uh, we are seeing early signs. Uh, I cannot uh, say that, uh, you know, we've reached peak levels, etc. But clearly all, the, all of our markets have improved. Uh, and we have seen growths uh, that is ranging anywhere from uh, 5 to about 25% depending on which segment we are talking about. Uh, so this is the situation. Now in terms of our exports, uh, unfortunately it's going the other way uh, and that is because the global economy uh, is right now in somewhat of a turmoil. I think we are aware of it. Uh, we have uh, you know, commodity prices that have crashed including oil. Uh, including various metals and countries that are dependent on producing these kind of goods like oil and commodities, their economies are struggling. Uh, similarly, as we know, China, which has been the major driver of global growth in the last decade, uh, has, is now slowing down. Uh, and in fact, even consciously slowing down uh, to convert its economy to be more consumption-based and to correct some of the massive infrastructure investments they had been making. Uh, and therefore, that is impacting a lot of other economies that were, uh, you know, exporting into China. Uh, so with all of that, uh, you know, our exports actually uh, are looking actually flat to down right now. Anand Talolikar, thank you very much for your insights uh, on Cummins India, on uh, smart manufacturing in India in general, and the importance of the GST bill. Great talking to you. Uh, thank you for joining us on NDTV Profit.